As surgeons in the 21st century doing laparoscopic and other endoscopic procedures, we often take for granted the tools and techniques available to us. But the foundations of modern endoscopic imaging go back nearly a half century, and it was largely a result of the innovations of one man who persisted in developing this technology at a time when few other surgeons were interested or saw any value in the use of a laparoscope in surgical practice. In 1962, when he was still in Australia, he had written that he, it seemed inconceivable to him that surgeons weren't more engaged and hadn't adopted the techniques of laparoscopy. How prophetic he was even then. He's, he's so creative, he has so much talent, but he has tenacity and he was tenacious in getting where he is today. George is almost one of the secrets of American surgery, a true inspiration. George Bercy was born in Zeged, Hungary in 1921 to a family of musicians. At age two, the family moved to Vienna. He began violin lessons at age four, and by the age of 10, was playing concertos and serving as concertmaster in the school orchestra. In 1936, his family returned to Hungary to escape the rising anti-Semitism in Austria. My grandmother was really the governor of the family, and she decided to come back home, as she called it, be going home. During World War II, young Jewish men in Hungary were conscripted to work in labor camps across Eastern Europe. In 1942, uh, my age group between 22 and 24 years old uh, were uh, called in to labor camp. Dr. Bercy was working in the University Hospital in Budapest as a general surgeon when the Hungarian Revolution overthrew the communist government in Hungary. Several days later, Soviet troops entered Budapest to put down the revolt and opened fire on protesters in the central square in Budapest. The hospital where Dr. Bercy was on staff was nearby and received numerous casualties. We received, in, within an hour, we were very near to the parliament, relatively near, approximately 250 severely injured people. It was clear on this particular day that I will leave Hungary. Dr. Bercy escaped from communist Hungary in 1956 and with the support of a Rockefeller Foundation fellowship, immigrated to Australia where he worked with Professor Maurice Ewing at the University of Melbourne. It was there that he developed an interest in the problem of common bile duct stones. It was amazing how many uh, negative common bile duct explorations we have. You know, I think the average figures was 50% was negative exploration. And this brought me to the idea seeing the cystoscope. In 1959, Dr. Bercy visited the Royal Technical Institute in London, where he met Professor Harold Hopkins, a meeting that would lead to collaboration with Carl Stortz and the commercial development of the Hopkin rod lens endoscopes for use in surgical practice. I, I think George Bercy's greatest contribution is the early work he did with Carl Stortz on the rod lens telescope because that's the tool that really made laparoscopy possible. One of the problems was the illumination used for endoscopic visualization. The xenon globe arc light in use at that time had poor illumination and was prone to explosions. We found this ceramic globe which was developed by the American Army. That uh, we got this one and we built the first unit and it was marvelous. And today, 32 years later, every endoscopic manufacturer, to my knowledge, using the same globe. I'll tell you what George meant to the formation and development of SAGES. Uh, first of all, as a surgeon performing endoscopy, he brought credibility and he promulgated the importance of surgeons getting uh, involved. I knew who George was 
for three years before I ever had a social word with him. He was, I knew he was a guru. He was head of the resident ed committee. Our early conversations consisted primarily of Dr. Mercy, what time would you like your resident ed committee meeting? And him telling me and my trying to get some different time. Together, the Bercy's impact on sages has been immeasurable. I'm biased, but I don't think there would be a sages without them. I really think they both were so instrumental, especially in those early years and through the laparoscopic revolution. I know we would not be where we are today without them. At the age of 90, George Bercy continues to innovate and develop new ways to improve surgical technology. You'd think that George, uh, at 90, would have uh, stopped thinking. Every day he has a new idea. He, he's a visionary.